Okay, we've been talking about starting your audience where they're able to start. But don't forget about the destination. In other words, what you want them to take away from the communication encounter. So think about how you memorize a telephone number. What I do is I try to chunk it. I try to chunk it into area code and then three digits and four digits. And eventually what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to combine into fewer and fewer chunks until I have one chunk. So we have a phone number and we'll probably put a label on it, it's Dave's number, and then we put a picture on it and there's our one chunk of information that we're trying to create. If we actually know the one chunk that we're trying to create at the end, we can actually focus our effort. And that's important because it helps keep the cognitive load down. So, Aesop's Fables. How many of you have heard of the story, or heard the story, of the boy who cried wolf? Probably a lot of us were told that story. I was told that story when I was growing up. Do you remember the point of the story? Aesop's moral to the fable? Remember what it was? If you lie, people will stop believing you. So you've got a shepherd who cries wolf because the, you know, he's bored and so the entire town comes out and he thinks that's kind of funny so he does it again and then when the wolf actually attacks, he calls and nobody comes. So the point is, don't lie. And that's why, that's the point that parents want to get their kids, give their kids. And they will retell that story, but it won't be the same way that they heard it. And it doesn't matter. As long as they understand what the point is, they can construct a story so the point makes sense. Point here is that we access information by topic. You know, I'm going to talk about fables or I'm going to talk about a shepherd or whatever, but we store it by points. What's your point? Research on reading shows that we remember the one or two key overarching points after a couple of weeks. We don't really remember the detail, we remember the point. We're going to have to make sure that everybody understands here what a point is. We actually train people to start with a point, start communication, a moral, as Aesop would call it. English 101, you start paragraphs with, I'm not sure what you call it now, but uh, they told me it was a topic sentence. Well, what's a topic sentence? It's the point that you want to prove in the paragraph, because you take the topic sentence and the rest of the paragraph is devoted to supporting information, information that proves your point. Here's your point, here's the detail. That's actually the way subheads should work, to subheads to body text. So you're around with a group of people in the evening and they're all telling jokes and you go, oh, oh, there's this joke I want to tell. And you're trying to think of it in your head. What's the first part you try to think of? Probably most of you came up with the answer. It's the punchline. Well, why do you try to think of the punchline? Well, aside from the fact that the joke would pull, fall pretty flat if you didn't have the punchline, it's a tool. You get the punchline, and then you use it to build the joke. Okay? So there's two people walking down the street, and one said to the other, I met a man with a wooden leg named Smith. And the other one said, really? What's the name of his other leg? Yeah, but if you don't get it, it'll come to you in a while. That is what I would call the message-driven approach to telling the joke. It's only the information necessary to make the point for the punchline to work. This is the way my mother would tell the joke. There's two people walking down the street and it's, oh, you know, it's a street kind of like, like, oh, you know, the one where you've got oaks on one side, maples on the other, and they're all really pretty this time of year because they're turning color. Anyway, anyway, they're walking down the street and they're going kind of slow because it's first thing in the morning and they haven't had their first cup of coffee. Oh, don't you just love that first cup of coffee in the morning? And besides that, the street's in terrible disrepair because they haven't passed a tax levy in about five years. And you're going, will you get to the point? You probably know people who talk like that. That's the information-driven approach to telling that particular joke. Anything related to the topic. So the information-driven, you're using the topic as the organizer instead of the point you want to prove. So what happens when we use topics instead of points to create presentations? Well, I've got a case history, one of my own. I was doing a group, a work for a group of Polynesians in Hawaii and they wanted to build a visitor center. And I was trying to understand what the point was, what they wanted people to, to go away with. What were the takeaways? 
And they kept giving me things like social customs, tools, social organization, religion, clothing, shelter, foods and diet, weapons, transportation. It was a laundry list of topics. Now, that's great organization for an encyclopedia. But people don't read encyclopedias cover to cover. They go when they already want information. And the information in there really isn't trying to make a point. It's just providing information. So I kept asking the question in different ways, and I finally irritated this guy. And he's, he's you know, uh, a Polynesian, and they're, for the most part, pretty laid back. So you understand this is quite a coup on my part to actually make him irritated. So he slams his fist down on the table, and he says, I want people to know that Polynesians had a very advanced culture for their time. Well, yeah, Polynesians were kind of disrespected, and this is what he wanted. And I said, bingo, in a really small voice, because this was a really large Polynesian, and he was kind of scary when he was like this. Anyway, I had what I needed. I can now present one chunk of information. That's the definition of the chunk. The chunk is they had an advanced culture for their time. It's very rich, but it's still one chunk. Bear with me here. Advanced culture? Well, these people traveled thousands of miles over open ocean. They navigated. They knew where they were going. These were master boat builders. You had to be if you wanted to make a, a boat that would actually survive travels like that. They had very complex pictorial language. They had, this is on Hawaii, they had no metal. All of their tools, all of their weapons were made of stone, animal parts, or plant parts like wood, cordages, etc. They had, on Hawaii, one of the most advanced dry land agricultural systems in the world in the 1800s. These are the same group of people who carved the Easter Island statues, and people are still trying to figure out how they did, those, did that and then transported them. Their domain spread over a huge area in the South Pacific, I mean, in North Pacific too, because it's Hawaii, it's uh, the Maori of New Zealand, it's the Tahitians. So it's an advanced culture? Yeah. My point is, a topic is a subject. A point is a message about the subject. Message about the subject. It's your point. If you use just a topic, you get an information-driven approach and you get encyclopedias. You get them in your presentations, on the walls, and AV programs. It doesn't matter. If it's an encyclopedia, people aren't going to pay attention. If you use a point, you get a message-driven approach. Polynesians had a very advanced culture for their time. They were master navigators. Now I have to prove that point. They were master boat builders. I have to prove that point. And on it goes. And if I prove all those points, they might get the point that, wow, these people had a really advanced culture for their time. It's not that the other information about Polynesians isn't important. It's just that it doesn't belong in this presentation. Relation to other theories. The point you're trying to make is a description of the core schema you want to communicate. Polynesians had a very advanced culture for their time. Think about the island schema that you did. You know, it has, it has nodes with connections, and you're trying to show Polynesians and all of these different things they do. Oh, you know, you got weapons. Okay, what's the connection now? Well, they were very skilled in making those, and on it goes. Focusing on making one point keeps the cognitive load down. Because we can only process, even though we can process three or four, it doesn't mean we want to maximize or get up close to the cognitive limit. You're just increasing the cost or the effort. Keep it down. So, here's a question for you to think about. Is it better to present a point and then the detail? Or pull everything together at the end? And you've probably had lectures both ways. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, it's better to pull everything at, at the end so, so the students have to kind of work with the information, you know, etc. Well, we're talking here about communication and cognitive load. Point before detail. If you give people the point, then they can add the information point by point. You're just processing two chunks at a time. If you give them all of the detail, they have to hold on to all of that detail, five, six, seven points, until all of those points are connected by whatever the overarching point, theme, concept is. Point before detail. How do you find your point? <clears throat> you might want to write this down because this is important. After learning about blank, participants will know that blank. Whatever you fill in after the word that has got to be a complete sentence and therefore it's a point. Don't cross out the word that. 
And you can put it in different ways. After hearing, reading, seeing this communication strategy, participants will know that. What is it they're going to know? And don't identify that with a topic. Identify with a complete sentence, a point that you're trying to prove. Picking your point is really hard. It's actually one of the hardest things to do in communication, interpretation anyway, because you're deciding not to tell them everything. That's hard in the first place. You're going out on a limb by making a decision on what to tell them. Oh, what if it's the wrong stuff? You want to tell them everything because it's cool, or you want to impress them with all you know. Hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of us have been guilty of that, probably everybody at some time or another. Well, here's some breaking news for you. You're not going to impress people by telling them everything you know. They're going to lose interest long before that. You can't tell them everything. They won't pay attention. They're not going to commit that kind of time. And your communication is likely to fail if you take one of those approaches. So, pick a point and stick to it. Summary. For communication to occur, participants have to be able to process. So some things that you can do is start where your target audience is able to start with their schemas, one of their schemas, so they can call it up and use it. Pick a point and stick to it and stay below cognitive limit, as far below as you possibly can.